Yes, we are on air. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the third episode of uh, the European Photo Show. I'm Michael Morris, and I will be hosting with uh, Hugo Say. Hello, Hugo. Hey, hi, Michael. How are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm good. Finally, we have some nice weather here, so we're shooting more. Uh, I just got the rain tonight here. So we've got uh, four guests tonight. Uh, we've got people from the UK and Ireland. So we've got uh, Steve Gill. Uh, hello, Steve. Hello, how are you? I'm good, and you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Great. Great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Um, we've got uh, John June. Hello, John. Hey, Michael. And again, like Steve said, thank you very much for the invite. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, we also got uh, John Tiger. Hello, John. Hey, Michael. Hey, how are you? Good to be here. Good. And finally, uh, we've got Neil McShane. Hello, hey, Neil. Hey, Mike. How are you? Good, good. And you? I uh, can't complain. Thanks for the invite. Great. As you said, at the, at the last minute. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not too late. No. So, um, maybe we can start with uh, Steve then. Yeah. Um, can you tell us about yourself a bit? Yeah, I'm um, now retired. Um, and I was just a, well, just sorry for that term, but an amateur photographer and just interested in uh, mainly landscapes is where I started from. Um, based in and around the Manchester area. Um, I hope everybody's familiar with that. It's about central between Scotland and the south of England. Um, so I get to shoot around Derbyshire, which are a, a sort of a hilly, not mountains, but hills through the, the Peak District National Park, um, through the lowlands of Cheshire, and also cover some of North Wales, the, um, certainly the North Wales coast. And shooting probably more seriously now for about seven or eight years. Um, before that, just ad hoc, really. Um, I'm obviously getting more time now. I've decided to take some early retirement. Okay, can you tell us a bit uh, about what you like to shoot, uh, mm. where you like to shoot, for example? Yeah, um, in and around Manchester. Um, I don't, if you, if we can, I was just going to share a screen then, but um, around Manchester area we, it's based between um, the east and the west coast effectively, which is split by the, the Peak District, which are um, hills going down, running down the spine, forming a spine down England. So I go over to the west of that. Um, and really not too far from the plains of Cheshire. Um, so I get, I get a chance to go uh, in the Cheshire area, but also because of uh, the location, also to sort of the lowland, the lowland uh, hills around Peak District and Derbyshire. So you've got places such as Macclesfield and Buxton, um, which are quite beautiful uh, in their own right. Um, some lovely lakes. So there's opportunities there to shoot some. Um, sunrise and sunset shots, particularly across the lakes. Um, and if really if it's not too far, probably about um, 50 or 60 miles from the North Wales coast, so probably about an hour, hour and a quarter away if I want to go to um, some coastal resort and uh, get some, you know, sunrise and sunset down there. Okay. Uh, so you shoot mostly landscapes? Yeah, mainly landscape, um, as I say, some seascapes. And just recently, I'm um, sort of moving across more into still, still life, and um, particularly got a project I'm going, which is uh, the flora uh, in and around this area. So I've got a lot of flowers, trying to do them in the natural environment, and particularly trying to shoot them with a white background, pure white background, to isolate them a little bit. So that's currently what I'm on with. Okay, that's nice. So do you get a lot of different flowers and stuff like that to run your... Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, there's sort of real... I think the real the, the project that I'm currently on, we started probably about um, a couple of months ago now, 
Um, when I was, prior to that, I was shooting um, the flowers, really trying to get them in their own environment so you see the nature as it's effectively intended. But recently, I've been trying to isolate them just to get a um, say setting a pure white background, still keeping them in their own setting, not cutting them, but um, putting a, almost a mini studio behind them and um, taking a shot to, to do that. So that's a current project I'm on with, I'm quite enjoying it. I don't, um, at the moment, sunset, sunrise here is probably four o'clock in the morning. And that doesn't go well with me, four o'clock. <laughs> um, you know, so uh, uh, the other way, you've got in winter when it's a much better time, it's freezing. So uh, it's um, horses for courses. So really, I've decided, couldn't be for me uh, at the moment, to do some uh, the still life area. As I say, a further project I want is to have a look at my own area and do some shots of uh, people, some portraits or environmental portraits, uh, along with some of the you know the beauty spots around the area to put it on a, a blog spot which I'm um, developing. So when you shoot flowers on a white background in their environment, what kind of setup do you use? What stuff do you bring to to shoot? What sorry what what equipment. what what equipment do you use to shoot uh, in their environment? All right. Well, if we just talk about, it, I think I've got a shot somewhere. I just bear with me. I'll just try and find it. Um, right. What what I do? I got a um, a. How did you do it? Let me share with the photo. Oh, no. um, I got a piece of perspex, white perspex. I'm just trying to get it. Oh, here we are. Which probably uh, let's just see if I can uh, share this screen to give you. A, Screen share. Screen. Have you got that? Yes. So I've got a piece of white perspex um, placed behind the, the subject um, with a flash just hung off the back of the um, arm, which will create a pure white background and just making sure I've got it far enough away from so it doesn't contaminate the, the subject. Um, uh, and I'm finding that works quite well. It does, as I say, just be careful where you put the uh, tripod feet, um, or in this case the light stand, so it doesn't damage any other um, plant life. But um, that's working quite well. Um, so that's really what I use for the current project. As I say, I can adapt that. I can rig it indoors if I want to, but uh, that's the one I sort of currently use. Okay, that's nice. Um, so do you have any images to show us, maybe? I'm sorry, I missed that. Do you have any images to show us, maybe? Yeah. Um, again, let me just um, go back to the screen. Yes. So, I'll, well, if I show you um, a couple of the plants first, uh, if that's OK, we've got a bit, we've got a bit of, a little bit of sound here. Yeah, that's <clears> fine. And then I'll just, if I could, just show you one or two um, shots of the landscape that's around the area because um, there's some really stunning places around here. And, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So these are some of the types of shots um, that you know manage to get with the isolation. Um, mm -hmm. And um, you know, I've got quite in, like in sort of the the ability to capture it and almost put it uh, as a still life. I don't probably as you're aware because it's now pure white. Okay, it's quite easy to drop some uh, textured background or even change the background. And um, so those are some of the type of images that um, really I'm, I'm finding quite pleasing to take. Uh, if I can just go back to show you some of the um, sort of typical landscape shots, which... So a question about your flower shots, I guess that your setup allows you to minimize the, the time spent on post-processing because you, you get a very good... You absolutely. You want a wide background, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's um, because as long as I don't contaminate, I have it too near the subject. It is pure white. I don't have to then, or it should I say, it's easy then to select and say Photoshop the whole of the white background because it is pure white. Um, and as I say, because of the 
if you have any dust spots, it doesn't necessitate a too great a depth of field or a greater depth of field. So dust spots tend to uh, disappear. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's just uh, you know it's, I think it's just a nice um, nice way. And I say, currently it pleases me, and that's really what I got out of photography. Is if I enjoy it. Hopefully other people do too, but the main thing is to sort of, you know, enjoy it myself. Yeah, beautiful. So, um, do you want me to just to show you some of the areas in and around one or two shots depicting some of the landscapes? Would that be helpful? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. This is a uh, typical scene um, that's round North Wales coast. It's um, this one set in Roseland Sea, which is not too far from Flandudno. Um, again, this is a sunrise shot, take a little bit earlier in the year when it wasn't four o'clock in the morning. But um, so on that particular coast, it's I can get or you can get uh, sunrise and also a sunset at certain times of the year, being north facing. Um, but there are places in, in um, Wales where it's, you know, if you wanted to get some pure sunrise or sort of over off to the uh, right of the image, um, you know, it needs to go a little bit more west facing. But there are some places to do that. Um, so we've got. That's sorry, Steve, I was going to ask you that. Um, yeah. There was a few places in Ireland you can do that as well, where you can go. You're on the east coast, you're the west yeah. east coast, and you get a sunrise on the west coast, mm. and vice versa. So yeah. I, was, I was saying, there's that a sunrise or sunset, but as you said, you can do both sunrise and sunsets in certain locations in Wales. Just about, you can get away with it at certain times of the year, absolutely, because the coast isn't, as you're as you know, obviously aware, it's not perfectly uh, straight, you know, yeah. it's, we have got inlets and all the rest, but certainly places like, in my case, Anglesey, which is a, uh, for those who don't know, it's a large island, which is an island just off the coast of Wales, um, and that's got some beautiful scenery, and as I say, because it's an island, you've got, you've got east-facing coastline and west-facing, so it's got to be the best of both worlds, really. Do you plan your uh, your shots uh, depending on the direction of sunrise and sunset using applications, uh, so um, you know exactly where, what you are going to expect, or are you more of a, well, saying, let's go there and see what we get? I, I, well, one of the main thing for me, if I want to create a, a shot, something like the one that's on the screen now, it, it's more a question of making sure the tide's out to give me some sort of feature that I want to play off on the sand. Um, so I'll use a tide calculator uh, and also one of the photo tools applications so I can see what time sunset on and also whereabouts it's got to um, actually lie on against the coastline. And there are, as you know, there are one or two uh, really excellent um, tools. I forget the one I got now. It's actually the main one I use is in my phone. I think it's Photo Tools. Oh yeah, another one. Yeah. Okay. So that's what can we do before these phones come out with all these apps to, to work oh, on these things? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got up early hour, and uh, I don't know. I suppose it's. Again, if, it. <laughs> if photographers lose their phone, they're not worried about the phone. It's all the apps they can't they have to use to get the shots that they're, they're worried about missing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so I say we've got you know there is a coastline. I mean, being Wales, uh, North, North Wales, the, you've got um, quite a heavy or historical mining community. So mm. there's a lot of slate mines in the area. Um, um, well, Quite a few places as well being given over to what we call the National Trust, which is old houses which have been given over so that's um, from um, stately homes, that type of situation where they've been now being given out into almost the public so they can go around and see some of the beautiful areas. Um, and as I say, there's a lot of, I think I've got one here, um, I've got that. But, you, know, we, you do get some very nice. Uh, areas and quaint little villages in and around the area. I mean, this one isn't too far from the previous shot, where um, you know we're talking about the time and all the rest. And certainly times of year, doesn't it? I mean, to get the red of that ivy that's hanging over the, the um, house, the little tea room, tea room. 
Um, it lasted for probably about a week in the year. And it depended on what time. I don't know what is going to happen this year because everything was late um, in the growing season because of the terrible weather that I think everybody's been having. Um, but I say it's about things like that is more local knowledge rather than um, you know an app. The okay. other, yeah. Um, yeah, just show you, yeah, yeah, just show you one more um, shot. The other thing I do like doing is, um, so I have a look at playing around with uh, water, and um, this shot is not, is, it's not in Wales, it's not too far from Wales actually, Delamere Forest, where you've got a very foggy day, um, but just sufficient light to hit probably about 50, less than 50 yards out into the lake. Um, and just to, just unable to pick out a tree, but again set it against. I must be a sucker for white. I don't know, but <laughs> set against um, a white background. So I do like, as I say, I like landscapes. I like um, certainly the lakes, and you know, I'm playing around with some of the reflections. This one is in one of the uh, down Chesh on the border of Cheshire, Staffordshire, and Derbyshire, which is um, probably about twenty miles from Manchester. Really, south of Manchester. So, there are, you know, for photographers, I'd say go there. It's a beautiful area. There's lots of uh, stunning uh, scenes to see and um, waiting to be discovered, I think. I love the symmetry in that language. Mm. Yes, I mean, uh, you know, it's one of those um, sunrise shots just after sunrise, this one. And, um, you know, literally, I've been there for the sunrise with the wife. Had sandwiches on the side of the trees, just walking back, and saw all the reflections of the boat, and um, set the tripod up, just wait for the boat to turn around. And then uh, I'd say, lucky shot, I could have just walked off and, and missed that, but um, making sure I look back. Okay, Steve, um, do you have one more to show? or? Uh, you... Yeah, here's one of. Um, Maybe your last one? Yeah, I'll show this one the last one if that's okay. Yes. Yeah, this is um, part of the, the in, in Derbyshire, just above uh, Staffordshire, it's part of the Peak District National Park. And this one is a place that's known as the Roaches, which is a series of these hills um, appearing out, jutting out of the landscape. And, um, you know, loads of walkers and climbers. If there are any climbers listening to this, I don't know how you do it because it scares me. But, um, you know, it's a beautiful area to walk, um, you know, with a bit of, you know, time and patience uh, and just waiting for the, uh, you know, the right moment and the, particularly getting the right location. You're able to get some really beautiful um, shots. As I say, this one's taken just up on the top of the roaches and then the. Um, Top right hand corner, almost top right hand corner, you can just about see the road snaking round uh, down below. So, um, as I say, summer it's full of walkers and climbers, but um, depending on the time of day and the time of year, you can virtually have it to yourself. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, uh, Steve. Okay, thank you for your uh, time. That was very nice. So let's move on to uh, John June. So, John, Thank you very uh, much, Mark. can you tell us a bit about yourself? How you came to photography? What kind of photography you like to shoot? Uh, something like that? Sure, absolutely. Um, I, I, suppose I, I, I can't reach back into my. Uh, my childhood and pick up specific memories of when I've got my first camera. I don't think it ever really resonated with me when I was a child. I have vague recollections of briefly being a member of the school photography club but and messing around in the dark room, etc. But uh, it, it didn't really stick. I do remember though in my early 20s I, I did a, a huge amount of travel across North Africa and the idea of photographing some of these places really, really appealed. So that's when I, I suppose I picked up my first DSL or SLR. But for whatever happened, I started to get those images back, those prints back from the labs, and they were hugely disconnected between what I saw on the page and, and what I uh, 
what I remember seeing. So I really kind of dropped it fairly quickly and, and never touched it again until about seven years ago in, in 2006, I was back traveling across Asia and, and Australia. And uh, at that stage I said, I, I did some research, really got hooked on the idea of DSLRs and the whole digital movement. So when I was in Tokyo, I, I picked up a digital camera and I, I, I can't even count how many photographs I took during that period of time, but, but, but a lot. And, and when I came back, uh, I started to put them all up onto the computer. And I, so the initial sense for me was, again, a feeling of being deflated. There was, again, a disconnect between what I witnessed, what I felt in some of these places, and then what I saw on the screen. But... I think the difference for me this time was besides each of those images, there was a whole load of buttons that I could press and sliders that I could wiggle. Uh, and once I started pressing buttons and wiggling sliders in Photoshop, etc., I suddenly realized that I could actually start to craft an image and, and kind of create uh, and connect what I saw on screen much, much more closely. So the bug really, I suppose, hit uh, uh, for me about seven years ago. And it's, I suppose it's been a journey since then, uh, and it's certainly not over. Uh, in terms of what I shoot, I suppose, like a great many people, I shot absolutely everything when I started. I tried my hand at, uh, you know, at portraiture, at still life, at landscape, at macro photography, etc. But what I began to kind of connect to was the passion was really there for landscapes. I, I think we're uh, really lucky in terms of living on an island, both Ireland and England, in the fact that we have access to so many amazing locations west to east. In fact, in Ireland, we're, you know, we're only four hours away from pretty much anywhere in the country. So we have amazing opportunities to, to visit some incredible locations. And it was that that really kind of drove me, and, and, and that was really the fire for me over the last few years. But I suppose one of the things that I also realized is once I, I start to isolate around the idea of landscape and, and choose a, I suppose a single genre, I, I then realized that landscape photography in itself is massive. You've got landscape, you've got seascapes, you've got you know sunrise and sunset and daytime and black and white and color. So I, I suppose I've continued to explore and experiment with all of those options. And I suppose, like many people, it started off with the sunrise and, and sunsets for me. Uh, I am a complete romantic, and I am very continue to be very drawn to the rom romantic idea of photography, the romantic scenes, and uh, I still in love shooting kind of sunrises and sunsets. But I suppose over the last year, year and a half, I, I've begun to kind of 